evening, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said well. We're coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee, and today we are going to Andrew Jackson's home, The Hermitage. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. So here you'll see a sign that says, Home of Andrew Jackson, Major General in the Army, Hero of the Battle of New Orleans, and Seventh President of the United States. It was originally built in 1819, partially burned in 1834 during Jackson's second term, replaced by the present building in 1835. He died here and is buried in the garden. This should be fun. I love presidential estates. Home of the People's President. Huh. This is Lafayette's tour. General Lafayette visited the Hermitage on May 5th, 1825. Andrew Jackson exhibited the pistols Lafayette had given George Washington in 1778. Here's a model of the original version of Hermitage. Pretty small. And then they've kind of like dissected it here by floors. So it says he was born in 1767 in an area on the border of North Carolina and South Carolina, and he was given the name Andrew in honor of his father, who he would never meet. His father would die shortly before his birth. Said his mother was hoping that he would be a Presbyterian minister. And they have a timeline of his life here. See, his father dies right before born in the Revolutionary War. His brother dies. Jeez. Mother dies during the cholera epidemic, making him an orphan. He begins studying law in North Carolina, admitted to the bar, appointed prosecutor of the Western District, and moved to Nashville. And he meets his love, Rachel Donaldson Robards, marries her. He, oh, it says unofficially, and then remarries her lawfully. Then he was elected to the Tennessee delegates in 1796, elected to the Senate, then judge of Tennessee, Superior Court, appointed commander of the Tennessee militia, 1802, elected Major General of the Tennessee Militia, and in 1804 he bought the 420-acre plantation here, naming it Hermitage. Not long after arriving in Nashville, he found residence at the widow Donaldson's house and took a fancy to her vivacious daughter, Rachel. <laughs> the young woman was already married. Her husband, Louis Robards, was a jealous and temperamental man Rachel had returned from Kentucky to her mother's home to get away. Jackson came to enjoy Rachel's company and she his, but when Robards traveled to Nashville to bring Rachel home, he became infuriated at their growing affection and left without her. Jackson accompanied Rachel to Natchez in 1791, returning later that year and said they were married there. In 1793, with a bitter Robards charging Rachel with adultery, Finally, on 8, 1794, Jackson and Rachel were officially wed, since no one could find the previous marriage certificate. It says these are our Commemorative medal soon after ratifying the Treaty of Ghent, the U.S. Congress authorized gold medals honoring the heroes of the War of 1812. After nine years of delays, design approvals, and actual production, Jackson finally received his medals in 1824. And then here is a presentation sword presented 20 years after the Battle of New Orleans given to Andrew Jackson. Here's his pocket watch. 
inscribed, presented to General Andrew Jackson by WWC, January 12th, 1815. So here inside this little locket piece is a piece of Andrew Jackson's hair, actually a quite large lock of it. It says, many people during this time weren't content with just images of Jackson on mementos. Many people desired the ultimate Jackson souvenir, a lock of his hair. <laughs> and then that was his beloved Rachel's necklace, Topaz necklace. This is an English Dirk sword that was presented to Andrew Jackson as a token of victory. Here they have a couple of figures wearing Andrew and Rachel's clothing from the victory celebration. It says, 1815 New Orleans transformed into a city drunk with victory while Jackson's troops remained stationed at the camp at the Chalmette Plantation and the British began preparing for retreat. New Orleans celebrated. Citizens rushed into the streets. The church bells of St. Louis Cathedral and other churches rang. Priests and ministers went to their pulpits with, giving, with Thanksgiving sermons. Parties, balls, and victory events happened throughout the city. Rachel and their six-year-old son, Andrew, made the long trip from Nashville to join her husband and take part in the festivities at a ball held to celebrate George Washington's birthday. It was a memorable crowd but the stars that evening were the general and his lady. They were, if not entirely graceful dancers, certainly enthusiastic ones, and their repertoire was a wild interpretation of a popular minstrel song, Possum Up a Gum Tree. Now we're taking the path up to the mansion and the grounds. Problem is they said that they don't allow any photos inside. So I'll be able to show it to you from the outside and then we can roam the grounds. There's a garden here and his burial and her burial, slave quarters. If I'm not mistaken, it's Andrew Jackson who was the one that invited all the townspeople to come celebrate inside the White House. And they were coming in through the windows and stealing stuff and destroying everything. So it looks like that would have been one of the main entrances when he lived here. I like the horse and buggy and everything to come in because there's some gates and everything down there and we're going right here right towards the house of course I'll fill you in on the tour afterward So that everything on the inside is the original paint, furnishings, furniture. It's the most authentic of all the presidential houses that you can tour. But he was the reason that they put the columns on the west side of the White House. And he was also the first president to pay off the national debt. He spent a lot of time here after he served as president till he died. Beautiful house. So they said that when his wife was alive, he didn't have the columns, didn't have the front porch, and didn't have the side porches either. That was all added after she unexpectedly passed away of heart failure and this is where I leave you well I will say this that was the most amazing interior I've seen in any of the presidential houses when you first walk in the main entryway it's all French wallpaper and it all tells a story it's like it has a, a whole ocean theme and it goes all the way around the room. He's got busts of um, his, what was it, chief of war 
and he had busts of himself, paintings of himself in every room. He had musical instruments. Now, what's interesting about this is that he was, they were rebuilding this and everything and it didn't have the pillars or anything at the time. It basically would have been from like here to here of just brick. And then uh, they had a fire and they ended up, it, not as much of it was dem was like destroyed as you would think because it was, the whole house was brick. But they started working on the interior and everything. And they were telling us that Rachel, his wife, she basically, you know, he was not even president yet and she passed away right before he was to become president. And he was madly in love with her so he never remarried and uh, she would have never seen the house looking this way in her time. It would have never had the, the columns or the, the sides or anything like that. The interiors were great. He basically, when he came out of being president, he came back to here and his son, his adopted son, Andrew Jr., was actually Rachel's nephew and they had adopted him so he was grown and he was married so he and his wife and their kids came and lived here with Andrew. Pretty interesting he would uh, host friends and various people here. The interiors were just so amazing. So cool to get to see. They said 90% of the interiors were original. Just yeah totally worth your time. There's the well. He said he was the first president to put plumbing, like indoor plumbing in the White House, but he didn't do it here. And I think the reason that that was is because he wasn't that wealthy, really. When his son took over the estate and everything, it was a cotton plantation, but they didn't do there very well. So they, they had to scrimp and save quite a bit. So the colors that he painted the walls, those walls that are painted, were colors that were really cheap, like they said Prussian blue and salmon, cheap colors to make back then. And I was kind of surprised to see how kind of plain the flooring was, just kind of like regular wood. Same thing for the uh, the balconies above, they were the same way just because it was cheap, you know. Yeah, it was a really fun tour. I highly recommend it if you're in the area. You get to go up both floors. Now let's see what else is around here. Here looks like a pantry. Well that shows some of the house. You can see the dining room back here at least. There you can see a painting of him. I mentioned that, I said, God, he had paintings of himself in every room. And they said, well, don't you have selfies of yourself in your phone everywhere? I said, not like that. They said, well, part of the reason that he had so many paintings of himself was because he had a friend who was a painter that lived with him for many years. So that guy did a lot of the paintings. But we saw Andrew Jackson's deathbed and right above, like, when you're laying in his bed, if you look straight up above the fireplace, there was a picture of his wife. And they said that that was there because he did that even in the White House. He liked to see her when he went to bed every night and when he woke up every day. Here's where he would have had dinners with the whole family, the grandkids and everyone. I was just impressed that so much of it was original. They said they actually have done like, whatever those like sample tests are of every single wall to make sure that the paint and everything on there wasn't done after or anything and it's all original. Now it's over here in this building. Oh. Basically the kitchen. So when he lived here, it was him, his son, his wife, and their three kids. 
and then like a hundred and something slaves working the plantations. You can even ride a horse and buggy around the property. The time that he died, he said it was like 1,200 acres, something like that. Now it's like 11 and a half. And it's saying that right here they did an excavation in 1993 and uncovered a 20 by 20 rectangular hole here that was once where their ice house was. They said at the time Jackson was the first guy to become president that was not an aristocrat he was like self-made didn't come from blue blood family and uh and he was like six foot two 140 pounds so he was like a total beam pole but he had been in like two duels and had a bullet like an inch from his heart that they couldn't get out that he lived with his whole life and they said he had got smallpox when he was like a teenager and never was really healthy after that he was always sick and even living to be into his 70s is kind of amazing considering how sick he was his whole life all right we're heading to the garden they said that they have wild turkeys that live on the grounds i just saw some Beautiful garden. Rachel passed away. He was completely heartbroken. And then he had to go serve his presidency. But as soon as he came out, he would spend every single day out here visiting her grave until he physically was unable to make it out here any longer. So then right here under this dome is Andrew Jackson's grave. You can see a small family cemetery next to it. His grandkids are here. See Colonel Andrew Jackson born here. They they say to make sure that you let people know that this is the Hermitage Plantation and that that is the mansion at the Hermitage Plantation. So when you see things like on this headstone where it says born at the hermitage they mean the plantation not just the house this one says sarah york wife of andrew jackson's adopted son of general andrew jackson and then same thing over here this one says andrew jackson adopted son of general andrew jackson said he died in a hunting accident here at hermitage 1865. Now on Rachel's tomb, there's a lot of writing. I'm gonna to read to you what it says. She's just to the right of Andrew Jackson. She would have been here first. It says, her face was fair, her person pleasing, her temper amiable, and her heart kind. She delighted in relieving the wants of her fellow creatures and cultivated that divine pleasure by the most liberal and unpretending methods. To the poor she was a benefactor, to the rich an example, to the wretched a comforter, to the prosperous an ornament. Her piety went hand in hand with her benevolence, and she thanked her creator for being permitted to do good. A being so gentle and yet so virtuous, slander might wound but could never dishonor. Even death, when he tore her from the arms of her husband, could but transport her to the bosom of God. And over here, it says, to the right of the Jackson's grave, 
the grave of Alfred Jackson, a former hermitage and slave worker. Alfred requested that the Ladies Hermitage Association bury him next to the Jackson's tomb. The marker reads Uncle Alfred because in the late 19th and early 20th century, the terms of uncle and auntie were considered a polite way of addressing elderly black people. No longer used today, these terms are now seen as derogatory. Right over here is Uncle Alfred's grave. Let's see, 1901. Uncle Alfred died September 4th, 1901 at age 98 years, faithful servant of Andrew Jackson. All right, let's go see what else is on the grounds here. I think there's also a church that he built here for him and his neighbors to worship at. They said they pride themselves here on knowing that if Andrew Jackson were to come back and looked around, he would recognize everything. And there's the house again. It says this is Alfred's cabin. This is like a recreation of Alfred's cabin. And he was the son of Sarah, who was um, Andrew Jackson's son's wife. He was Sarah's, she was Sarah's cook. So he was born on the plantation, Alfred was, and he was in charge of the uh, the horses and the vehicles and everything. And they said he was here and witnessed the bustling cotton plantation before and after the Civil War when it was in its decline and then saw the, the rebirth again under Andrew Jackson. So it's a recreation of where he would have lived and what the slaves' quarters might have looked like. And this has been, I believe they said this, the Hermitage has been showing, giving tours longer than any of the other houses since the 1890s. Not the best bed, but uh, I've been to a lot of recreations of slave homes and this is by far one of the bigger ones. By far, by double, honestly, by double. Even taking into consideration that people were thinner and smaller back then, it's still not a huge living space, but good for the time. There are those wild turkeys. I'm not going to bother them. It's their house, not mine. It's kind of cool to see them, though. Now, what I think this is out here is a recreation of the early Hermitage house, the one that Rachel would have lived in. Oh, that's the spring house. So they call it Gravelly Spring, provided abundant water for the Jackson simple log farmhouse and later the brick mansion. Jackson had the lime, limestone spring house built to shelter this precious water supply in 1821 two flute free flowing springs under there looks like there's another building out here so this is the first hermitage it says it says the uh, log buildings tell a st American story unlike any other from 1804 to 1821 two-story farmhouse and kitchen outbuilding were the first home of future president of the United States, Andrew Jackson, his family. Jackson lived out and became a symbol of the American dream. After Jackson moved to his new brick mansion in 1821, he reconfigured his old log farmhouse to a one-story slave cabin. So let's go see the buildings. So he took it from being a two-story to a one. Wow. That would have been the kitchen out building.
those are all broken dishes found on the grounds. So yeah, they basically just turn that into dissected slave quarters. Oh yeah, and it went underground too. All right, my friends, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. I'm sorry I couldn't show you more of the inside, but those are the rules and some things you have to come see in person. If it's your first time watching me, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great night and goodbye. Set.